welcome to Up The Villa podcast. If you're new to our channel, subscribe, drop this video a like and get involved in the comment section down below. So it feels like forever. It feels like forever since we've been watching Aston Villa. I hate these international breaks, but you know, the Villa lads are doing okay. Watkins bagged the goal for England. So top, top quality stuff. Um, be sure to check out our financial episode um, we had a special guest, Dave Jordan, on. He ran through all of Villa's accounts. It went down very, very well. Um, and it definitely clued up myself on, on Aston Villa's finances. And we also released an episode where I talk about how I fell in love with Aston Villa. Now, if you haven't checked it, just go and check it out for the comments section because the comments section for that video was absolutely fantastic. There was loads of Villa fans from different ages, different eras of watching Villa, talking about their stories on on how they came to love Aston Villa. So be sure to go and check that out as well because it, it was top, top quality. And it was great to hear the different stories of, of, of what you've witnessed as an Aston Villa fan. And before we start then, we've got some brand new merch that is about to drop. You can purchase this from our website. Uh, the link will be going across the screen so you can type that in on your internet browser, check it out. Go to the shop um, and purchase your mug. It's $9.99 plus posted and packaging. And all the profit that we make is going back into the channel just to help it grow and, and help us get better and get some better tech and whatever going on. So here are the brand new mugs. So they are very, very nice. They've got our branding on and we've got a very cheeky little retro picture through here. So the mugs are very nice. Justin is sporting his little prototype that he had made, but the mugs are really cool. Uh, I think they're better than the last mugs that we had as well. So um, if you want to check out our mugs, then go to the website, uh, help support the channel. They're $9.99 plus postage and packaging. Um, so yeah, I'm going to bring in a little guest for us today. We've got Ross from the South African He's a chairman of the Villains Club there, so he's coming all the way from South Africa, which is absolutely amazing. So, how are you, mate? All good. I might need one of those mugs. Unfortunately, I've just got a clear glass. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's Get yourself good. on the website. <laughs> so, thanks for joining us, mate. So we'll just we'll just get into it a bit a bit of Villa chat to start us off with. Then, so. Um, you know, it's an international break. Watkins has bagged a goal. Ryan looks like he's camped outside Villa Park. Pumping <laughs> at the bit to get in there. So, start with you, Ryan. What have you been up to? Well, I've got myself in a new little den here. I'm in a new little podcast den. Um, supporting my shirts. This one's from last season's win. Al Ghazi penalty. And this one was the first time I went to Molyneux. Heskey back the last minute. A last minute winner. I'm actually going the game on a uh, Saturday, so super looking forward to this. Catch your breath. How I got a ticket for this game? Go on. On the uh, on the raffle, the raffle oh ballot. You might want a ticket on the. I thought I've never ever seen anyone post saying they've won won on that competition. I thought it was a load of bollocks to be honest. But um, <laughs> no, he texted me on Monday. He said I've won the raffle, so you want to come? So um, yeah, I'll be there. So um, yeah, super excited to get back. Brilliant stuff. And Justin, what have you been buying then? <laughs> Nothing really. Uh, I've got my ticket for Wolves, so I'll see you there, um, Ryan. I didn't realise mm -hmm. you was going. So, uh, yeah, I we'll forgot to tell you. Have so. a pint before the game, yes. yeah. Nothing really, just waiting for football to kick off again, isn't it? It's, it's These international breaks are a nightmare, aren't they? So, uh, they would be glad to get back into the thick of it again on Saturday. Uh, big, big one to come back to, isn't it? A nice local derby to whet the appetite. Well, yeah, can't wait for it. So, Ross, what's it like then, South Africa, being a chairman of the Villains fan group there? So, what's it like? Well, it is amazing. You know, I'm in a privileged position to run the fan club here in South Africa. And let me tell you something. There's plenty of villains here in our big country. There's a lot of them. Um, we've been able to have a couple of meetups lately after our COVID restrictions have been lifted, which is quite nice. But I promise you, we're as passionate as any other villain group around the world yeah it's, it, it's quality stuff to be fair so we got wolves coming up uh less we say about the last game the better against wolves but they had it done to them against leeds in their last home game as well so wolves have got neves out um 
Jimenez is uh, suspended as well. So they've got two big players missing from that game. But, you know, it, I feel like Watkins bagging his goal, it's going to be, he's going to be banging form now. And it, it's just going to be nice to see, watch Villa again because it's just been, for me, I just feel yeah. a bit frustrated. But to be fair, like, we've had games and, you know, I don't feel like we're really getting sort of a little bit of momentum. It's sort of like we have a couple of games, then we don't, then there's postponements. And I, I don't know whether that's a little bit to do with like the atmosphere at Villa Park as well. You know, we're not really having that many like back-to-back games. It always feels like it's like once a month and once every three weeks. And I, and I think that's partly why the atmosphere has been a little bit poor, to be fair. Well, that's what that's what I'm putting it down to. But, you know, hopefully... We can we can be bang at it at the Molyneux. Ryan, what, what are your feelings towards the game then? Yeah, like you said, Neves and Jimenez. Big, big misses that is for Wolves. Uh, Neves, he just runs the game, doesn't he? Uh, they're, they've improved possession-wise, hasn't they, Wolves, under the new manager. And, and Neves is the conductor of it all. So it, it is. It is, um, it is a massive loss. And Jimenez as well. He hasn't been as prolific as he was before his injury, but he's the main focal point and he just brings that team together and and, and leads the line so well. So we're in for a tough game. I th- I th- even with them two missing, I think we're still in for a tough game. Um, defensively, they are very, very good. Uh, I think it's only the top three that have got a better defensive record than Wolves. Um, Attacking-wise, not so much. 30-odd goals, so 10% of their goals come at Villa Park, so that just shows you how much they the don't score. So I think our attackers need to be on it. If we can be ruthless in front of goal, take our chances. And I think we've got every chance of um, of getting something from this game and closing that gap that they so like to talk about. <laughs> oh, they, they love bringing that little yeah. chance. Oh, they love the yeah, gap, don't they? It, it's crap. <laughs> <laughs> it's a crap chance. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, so, yeah, I mean, they've got some really good players. I, I really like Pedence. I, I think he's technically very, very good. Um, I love Neto. He, he's been injured, hasn't he? So, you know, before he, he had that injury, he was set in the Premier League a lot, wasn't he? And, um, you know, he's, he's, he's a player that I, I really enjoy watching. Um, but they're, they're having a good season, aren't they? They're, they're doing it's a fair play to them. They're doing a lot better than what I thought they would be doing this season. I, when Nuno went, I thought it was all going to just unravel, but fair play to them. You know, Bruno Lars, he's setting them up very, very well. Like Ryan said, they're, they're, they're really tight at the back. And and it's, it's going to be a difficult game. Justin, I know you've got a couple of mates that are, that are Wolves fans. So, uh, how is it going to be for you? Oh, it's a nightmare. My next door neighbour is a massive Wolves fan. So, uh, you can imagine uh, how much I need to get this result over the line after what happened last time. We, we tend to put notes on each other's cars the following morning after after results. So, uh, <laughs> so, hopefully I'll be putting one on his on, on Sunday morning, giving him a bit of stick. Uh, he's a good lad, to be fair. We have a good chat about the football. So yeah, I'm with you. I, I, you know, when <clears throat> when Nuno went, I, I thought that could be the beginning of the end of this renaissance for Wolves. But they've picked another beauty, haven't they? With Bruno Large, he, he's really took them onto another level. Um, what's interesting is that is their form this season. Their away form is a lot better than their home form. I think they've got 26 points from their 15 away games this season, which is really really good. But their home form. Uh, Got it here. They've only picked 20 points up from 15 games at home, which is only 1.3 points per game. So, really, you know, I'll, I'll, that gives me a lot of hope going to the Molyneux, especially with two of their better players missing. You know, we, we're going to have to have a reaction after that ar- dismal Arsenal showing. So, I'll be pretty confident, providing everybody comes back from international duty and decent, decent fitness, uh, that we can go there and give them a really good game. You know, we've had some amazing games against the Wolves over the last three or four years. You know, the season when when they got promoted before us, we, we I think we spanked them five to me at Villa Park, which is an amazing game. Uh, so yeah, it, it, you know, two teams really that are sort of our class is very similar at the moment. Um, where they are in the league, they've just slightly got the edge of us at the moment. But I think that's mainly down to our season, the way it's gone up and down with manager and manager change and, and you know inconsistency there still. Whereas they're more solid, really. They like they've got a solid eleven. They know how they play which is where we need to get to, really. You very rarely see Wolves have a, a bad game. That you know They're generally pretty decent in most games. If they get beat, it's by the odd goal. Like Ryan said, their defensive record is phenomenal. So we've got 
to be on it. And, and when we get a chance on Saturday, we've got to make sure we take it because we don't think we're going to, you know, especially after what happened against Arsenal, one shot on target, that was the last kick of the game. We've got to make sure that, that we create chances and when we do, we take them. So that's going to be imperative with an away game as well, especially at Wolves. But yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I think uh, we've got more than enough in the tank to win the game, as we've proved at home when we was turning up and coasting, really, with, what, 10 minutes to go. And it was just an <laughs> abomination that last 10 minutes, wasn't it? Yeah, what a team to do it against. So it'd be nice to get one over on it after that. But looking forward to it. Can't wait for the game. It's a, it's a good point you made about the, the home and away form there because our away form under Gerard, the Palace, the Brightons, there was, an, it was Everton as well. Um, we've had some good results away from home. So, yeah, it's positivity is coming back now. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, yeah. 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 I would like to, though, touch on Ryan's points earlier of, the, of how Wolves have been playing and the results that they managed to muster. You know, one of the reasons why Wolves are higher on the table than us is because of those games where they're able to nick a draw. Villa, far too often, from uh, from positions where we seem to be you know nil nil or one one, and we look like we might just steal a draw or nick something out of the game, we throw it away. I mean, we can look at the Brentford game early in the season where we lost, where we threw that lead away, as well as the reverse fixture against Wolves, where fine we were leading two nil, but you think at two two the boys will think, come on, let's not lose three points here because now we've just given them away to Wolves. Let's try and fight it out and battle it for that point. But we haven't. And I think that's one of Villa's weaknesses, though, throughout the season. Yes, fine, we're winning a good couple of games compared to other seasons. It's great. We're on, we're on progress. You know, there's definitely a plan there. But we could definitely be a lot more closer to Wolves on the table if we were just able to hold out for those draws like Wolves have. Yeah, you, you, that's a brilliant. But I mean, we we spoke about that thing. I think was it me and you, Justin, that spoke about it after the Arsenal game or, or one of the episodes where you know if you look at the win column and the loss column, there's there's two draws yeah. straight in the middle, and I think that's an area where next season we we definitely need to improve on because if you if you can't win, don't lose. Do you know what I mean? And, yeah. And and that and that feels like where we are at the minute and. You know, going into this game, if you if you look at how we've been going, we're either going to win or we're going to lose. Do you know what I mean? And and, and there's nothing yeah. really in the middle, so um, it's it's definitely something that we've got to work on. So, well, what's everyone's vibe then going into the, the, you know the the last cup? Well, we got how many games we've got left? We've got about nine, nine, ten games, something like that. So nine, nine games, isn't nine it? Yeah. Games. yeah. So, what's everybody's thoughts and where 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 are we going to end up and? And and how is it how is it going to play out towards the end? I'll, I'll take top at, ten. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree with Ross. Really. I think. I think if we can just just basically stay in that top ten now, I think. I think we, we we'll take that now. Um, we don't want to drop out of it. You know, there's one or two teams that, that, that chasing our heels. Uh, uh, you know, Palace are the one for me. They're in great form at the moment and they're only, what, a couple of points behind us. Southampton are a strange side. They've, they've pulled out some amazing results this season. And Leicester, you know, they're the three teams right on our tails. So it'd be nice to, to keep hold of that ninth position. That That's where I'd love, love to finish. But, I mean, beat Wolves on Saturday and we go, what, seven points behind them with a the game in hand. So... There's still a chance there, you know. It's a small chance, but I think I think ninth would be a fantastic <laughs> season. We said at the start of the season, didn't we, that if we finish higher than we finished last year, then then we'll be over the moon. Yeah. And, and ninth is an improvement, isn't it? So, especially with everything that's happened. Yeah, two, two yeah, spaces that would be, wouldn't it? Did we finish eleventh? Eleventh last season, didn't we? Eleventh yeah. last year. Yeah. So it's, it's season on season progression. Um, but I, I do think I still think we should be aiming to try and catch Wolves. Um, you know, it's it's a big points gap, and it, but it's a target, isn't it? And it, it keeps you focused on what's in front of you and not the chasing pack that's behind. So, um, yeah. I do feel I do feel um, a top ten position in the Premier League after all the upheaval we've had, after the players we lost to COVID at the start of the season on international duty, the the, the postponements and everything. I know every team's had it, but um, the the manage, managerial change. I think it will be a real good achievement if we do finish in the top ten. And, and something to build on heading into next season as well. Ross, what what are you looking for moving into next season? Then what 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 do you sort of want to see? How, how do you want us to progress? And and how far can we go under Gerard? Well, look, there's no denying that Europe was always the goal 
after Dean Smith got sacked, I pretty much rubbished the ambition this season. Now it was all about trying to stable the ship with Gerard, seeing how he can get his team and his vision together with his tactics because it's not easy. The way he plays is is hard. It's hard for the players to become accustomed to, especially during the middle of a season. Um, and with the players that we have, we might not have that balance from attack to defense. So I would like the, I would like the team to show a lot more stability. I mean, I can elaborate further by saying there's times that I've seen both Buendia, Coutinho and Jacob Ramsey playing together, three of the, our most creative players. That leaves nobody in the back to help uh, help our defense out. And I know that we said Nakamba, and I know that there's been talk of us trying to get a big, strong uh, defensive midfielder in. But all of all of these small issues is what I feel Gerard needs to sort out between now and the start of next season for us to have a real platform to actually go and challenge for those European starts. Yeah, uh, I agree, to be fair. Um, I spot think on, what, absolutely what, spot on. Yeah, I think what has been interesting, you know, if, if I had to rate this season right now out of 10, I'm probably going to give it like a seven at the most. Do you mm. know what I mean? I, I think it's been, as a fan... A very, very frustrating season. I think we, slightly uh, underwhelming. Yeah, yeah. slightly underwhelming yeah. considering the players that we've we, got. We came into it with okay, high, not high hopes. We we were trying to get into Europe, weren't we? And and it, it just went horribly, horribly wrong, um, which was a major disappointment. And I just feel like under Gerard, we've 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 seen a system that we want to go down that has been working well. And then it sort of like just puts you back down to earth when you put in a stinker and you're just like, yeah. oh, no. And then you, you do all right for a couple. And then so it just feels up and down. And, and and I see a lot of fans on social media saying that the atmosphere at Villa Park's rubbish. And I just think this is just a culmination of, of this season. So for me, I just want to get this season out of the way and just focus <laughs> on pre-season and, 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 implementing this system more because I feel like Gerard needs a full pre-season with this squad for so everybody's understanding of their roles and we know what we're doing and, and just everybody knows where we are and where we're at and what's expected of them. I, I feel at the minute still when he, when he speaks about a belief, I feel like I, I get that they're just not understanding it fully and I think that time on the training pitch in the summer is is just going to be massive, and he does need his own players. And you know, and he's only had one window, and he's brought in Coutinho. So I dread to think what what names are on that piece of paper that he's going to uh, give to Justin's mate in the summer, because you know it's just going to be brilliant. But you know, I, I'm still I'm going to give it a seven because I just think you know, it's up and down. And, and to be fair, when we lost them five games under Dino, Gerard went on that little bit of a of a bad run as well. You're talking like eight or nine games there where you, where you mm. haven't won a game and you haven't even picked up a point. And, you know, if we'd got a couple more wins or a couple of draws, we, we'd be like in and around Wolves now. And so what what's your thoughts on the season mm. as a whole so far, Justin? Yeah, I think following any football club is not an exact science. Is it? It's... There's ups and downs. That's what makes following football such an amazing thing, isn't it? And and we're only three seasons back into the Premier League, aren't we? At the end of the day, you, you know, we finished seventeenth, we finished eleventh, and hopefully we can improve on that this season. So for me, it's an improvement. I agree with you. I think I'm in around seven, probably seven out of ten, to be honest with you, because it's it, not that we're not. Not that we're disappointed with where we hoped we were going to finish, because we all said that to start the season. I just think with the players we've got, I think this season could have been so much more. But as soon as Smith went on that losing streak and we had to, and the manager got sacked, then it's just about regrouping, isn't it? Get trying to get the right manager in for the long term vision of the club, which I think we've got now. I think Gerald whilst he's still in his infancy and as a manager, I think he, he's shown already enough and that he's learning. In, on the job as well, quickly enough to, to, to make us a force. And, and the pulling power he's got, which he's proved already in one transfer window, is the thing that probably, hopefully, will catapult us into those top six places next season, which is where we've got to be aiming, especially with the mooted amount of money that's supposed to be spent in the summer and the, and the players that we've been linked with already. Then then Europe, really, top six, has got to be the aim next season. I don't think the owners would accept 
you know, anything less. Uh, I mean, if we just missed out, fair enough, seventh, eighth, and, but we had a really good go at it, I think you'd probably about just about accept that because that's another improvement. But overall, we've got to look to kick on. Um, we've got the right manager in charge now, in my opinion. He's had uh, a decent amount of time now to get used to the players we've got. I think, like Ross said earlier, there's players there that, that, that you know, that, that probably aren't going to carry on with us because of the change of system that he likes to play, that, that Dean Smith brought them in to play a certain way, but we now play a different way. So I see a turnover of players again in the summer, which brings little people, you know, and brings a bit of uncertainty to the start of the season again. But I think if the quality of player comes in in the summer that we want and we, and we look like we're going to get, then I only see another improvement. So 17th to 11th, 11th to 9th, and then 9th to a European run. For me, in four seasons, he's, he's great. That, that's what we wanted as, as a fan base, isn't it? You know, Rome wasn't built in a day. We're building solid foundations, and Ryan likes his foundations. We know that. And then uh, we'll kick on it and hopefully become he's a force. Solid back in the the league. And all. Yeah, he's got the You're rock solid the there. <laughs> yeah. um, so we're getting into that like silly season, kit mm. season. Do you like this one? Do you not like this one? That's shocking. Um, I do quite like that one that's been shipping around today on social media as a third shirt or, or whatever. So, Castle Ray are going to be Villa's kit manufacturer next season. Ryan, I know you love your kits then. So, what are your thoughts on Castor? Yeah, I think it's um, I think it's good for the club. Um, a couple of them concept kits are absolutely brilliant, you know. Um, just feel that fans should have more involvement in, in all these designs because the ones that do the rounds on social media, I'd, I'd, I'd buy them. I'd snap the hands, especially that one today. It does look good with the colour and stuff. So hopefully yeah. they um, they come up with a, a, a unique design for Aston Villa, like something that separates us from the rest. It's, um, you know, Kappa have done a decent enough job. The, you know, the shirts have been all right. Um, they haven't had much luck with the third shirt, but I hope um, <laughs> maybe, maybe next <laughs> maybe next season. But um, yeah, excited, excited. It's always exciting to to um, the build up for for the kit launch and uh, finding out what the new kit looks like, and then getting down Villa Park and getting it. So um, yeah, looking forward to it. And we don't really talk about the general Premier League as a whole, but we'll we'll, we'll touch on it being as. We didn't play last, last week and stuff, so we'll just sort of, you know, just talk about something a little bit different to end the, end the show as well. So, Ross, who do you feel like is going to win the league then? Is it City or Liverpool for you? Oh, you know what? I'm going to be a little bit biased here. Um, I'm going to go and watch uh, the Villa versus Man City at Etihad. So, they'll be my first time to England, and I want to see them lift the title. I want to see a title lift live. Mind you, we'll probably get smashed. <laughs> but <laughs> if I can see it live, then it'll probably be a dream come true. So I want to go City just for that basis. I know Ryan's waiting for a Coutinho banger to stop him from winning it. Aren't you? Yes, <laughs> yes. I do not want to see uh, Jack Grealish as petty as it is. I do not want to see him winning <laughs> the Premier League trophy and his winner's medal, uh, especially in front of a, a Villa away end. So yeah, Coutinho last minute, Gerardo Coutinho. Gifting Liverpool the title, that'd be a, a quality last day. And um, yeah, you'd get some scenes in the away end then, to be fair, wouldn't you? You'll be shattering yeah. my childhood dream there, Ryan. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> you, you'd be able to see it in a helicopter fly off to Anfield. So you'll catch a glimpse, you'll catch a glimpse of it, man. <laughs> yeah, I, I, feel, I feel like City are going to do it as well. I, I feel like Liverpool, Liverpool's games are looking... Just that little bit trickier for me. So, Justin, relegation then? Is it the three that are down there or? It's tight, isn't it? I think Norwich have gone. Um, mm. And then for me, it's two from probably, I mean, can you still say Brentford? I think Brentford are probably still in it. Newcastle, I think, have done enough now and they've done enough in the transfer window, haven't they, to, to put themselves clear. I think they've got a good enough squad now to, to see them clear. Brentford, you know, they do keep getting the odd result, which keeps them oh, away from that bottom. Safe. Yeah, I mean, they're eight points clear now with, what, eight games to go. So, it would take a big collapse now for them. And the same with Leeds, really. They've had a little couple of little wins recently. which have just put them that seven points clear of the bottom. Everton, the one for me that I think are in big trouble. I think if what can, Watford or Burnley can put anything like a run together in the last eight, nine games... Then I can I see Everton with their running. They've got some horrendous games coming up in their running, and they are in awful form. So I, I just think there's a there's a really good chance they go down. They've got to play West Ham, 
They've got to go to Burnley. They've got United, Leicester, Liverpool, Chelsea, Leicester again. <sighs> Uh, Brentford, yeah, second yeah, no. to last game of the season, and then they go, and then they got Arsenal away. So that running is what what I would think could could ultimately send Everton down. To be honest, um, so yeah, I, I'm going to say Everton to go. Burnley would be looking at them two fixtures against us, thinking six points easy because they beat us all the time, don't they? Mm. Yeah, they've got a good team, they? Bogey team, yeah. Right? Yeah, I don't think we've oh, we've only beaten once. Maybe we beat them on that New Year's Day, and that flipping now that come at a cost as well, didn't it? With um, Heaton yeah. and Wesley getting injured, but uh, apart from that, they've been a uh, tricky customers. They have indeed. How, how, do you, how do you watch the game, Ross? Do you, is there like a, a group of you together that watch it, or do you? Enjoy yeah, the game so or... yeah, so our last game against uh, Arsenal, um, we had a couple of us just go down to our local pub and watch. Um, it's very hard to try and accommodate everybody at the same time, you know, because we're so such a massive country. Uh, it's only really the guys in this areas that can actually go and watch games together. So most of the time, it's we're either watching the games by ourselves or the odd occasions we can go as a group. What time do the games kick off there then? So if it's at three o'clock, which doesn't happen yeah, well, often, obviously. <laughs> well, right now, we're only an hour ahead of you guys. So okay. when the clocks move back, then we're only two. Right, so it's not that much different then, isn't it? So you can, it's not late afternoon, isn't it? No, 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 not at all. I must say, though, slightly off topic, um, every once in a while I keep looking up at my second screen because France is playing South Africa at an international friendly, and Luca Dinia is looking on form at the moment, he's tearing um, us apart. He's playing, he's so, playing, that's good. Yeah, he's playing. He's, he's absolutely destroying us, and the types of crosses he's putting in are crazy. So I expect him to come back to Villa on top form. Yeah, we haven't right. seen the best of Luca Dean, have we, at Villa yet? I think that's something you know we haven't touched on a lot because he's. I'm not saying he's been underwhelming, but I don't think he's hit the the, the heights that we hoped he would because he's a phenomenal attacking fullback and his set players are very good. So I think we've yet to see the best of him as well, which is good. Hopefully, yeah. Yeah, I think he's just been solid, hasn't he? That, that's what he's been. Yeah, yeah. Not been yeah. exceptional. Seven, seven think... out of tens, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah. And yeah, Lewis Morgan uh... Sanson is here as well. He's a cheerleader. Is <laughs> he at the game? Another shout out, Jacob Ramsey, England yeah. 21s. What a goal that was! Yes, that, that yeah, that he's was, been doing that, really well. That was quality. That was right. So, we'll end it there then. Um, a little bit of a different one off topic towards the end, but you know, we <laughs> haven't played, so there's nothing else to talk about. So, uh, hopefully, we previewed the Wolves game. Um, sure, some of them are probably going to bait us in the comment section about that shit song that they sing. Uh, but in other news, check out utvpodcast.co.uk. Uh, our new mugs have dropped. $9.99 plus postage and packaging. Very, very nice. Uh, nice little nice. design. Um, yes, quality, quality stuff. So thank you for watching. We'll be back to normal now with our predicted lineup out later on this week. Match reactions. And then we'll be looking forward to returning to Villa Park at home against Spurs. Up the Villa. Thanks, Ross, for coming up. Up the Villa. Up the Villa. Up the Villa. Up the Villa. Up the Villa.